Hey, what's going on, everyone? Another episode of Past the 40. Our guest today is Aaron Stell. Aaron, what's happening? Uh, just down here hanging out, and uh, it's actually where my scotch locker is here. So, <laughs> chat with you. You're probably the first guest to at least at least make it known to us that you have a, a scotch locker. So first off, what, what part of the world are you in? So I'm in Portland, Oregon right now, It okay. is where I live. Awesome. And tell us more about where you're sitting from here. It looks like, for those of you who are on audio and not video, it looks like you're about to have a two-bottle minimum and a DJ is about to start playing some hip-hop. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, so it's, it's, the easy answer is it's technically a wine storage facility, but they have some cool um, spaces like the one I'm sitting in here where you know, you can go and grab whatever you've got in the back and then you just bring it out and they have glasses here and things like that. So it's, it's nice to bring down, you know, friends or if you're, you're going out with clients or something like that, you just grab whatever you want to, to drink and you pour it up and sit back and sip away. So you're drinking your own booze and they just provide the atmosphere and the service? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so okay. it's, a, it's a pretty cool place. And then this, this particular room has the dark wood and the leather couches and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice little cozy environment. It does look quite cozy to uh, <laughs> sip on a, uh, a, dark, a dark liquor with a, uh, maybe a cigar or a pipe or something like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what it's for. Or maybe even wearing a robe with a, <laughs> under a lamp, like reading a book or something. That's the only thing I'm missing is I need the big like Hefner smoking right. jacket or something like that. Are you uh, ready for 40 questions here today? Yes, sir. All right, let's get right into it. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, so, you know, being right at 40, uh, I'm like a lot of kids. I watched Top Gun and I was sure I was going to be a fighter pilot. So <laughs> I wanted to fly around and, you know, basically do everything Tom Cruise did in Top Gun. At, at what age did you realize that that might not, uh, might not come true? It was really like when I had allergies and, you know, I had other stuff going on. My dad's like, yeah, I don't think they really like people to have allergies when you're a kid. And so I, <laughs> I gave up on that, at, you know, about middle school. <laughs> so you're in, you're in tech marketing world with a uh, focus in the real estate industry. How do you think technology will like change the way that we look at or view real estate in the next, let's say, decade? Uh, so, so I think there's going to be two different ways. Um, you know, one is, you know, if you're in the, the kind of online lead space, you're, you're going down that direction. You know, I see where, where bots and things like that are becoming, you know, a way to communicate, at least get the conversation started before a person has to get in. So, mm -hmm. you know, even auto conversations, there'll be a lot more information that way. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing now is, you know, even stuff like what we're doing here with Skype, where you know traffic in Portland sometimes it's not terrible, but there's times where it's really bad. And so you know virtual walkthroughs, even sitting down with clients where you're doing it via video instead of you know having to drive across town in order right. to actually chat with somebody or let them in. So you'll be able to use it to really get a lot more of the information before you even step foot in the house or or deal with people. What about virtual virtual reality, where you can kind of like be in the house from your home? Is that going to be a thing? I assume at some point. Yeah, yeah, they're doing they're doing a lot of stuff with that. Um, you know, both virtual reality and augmented reality, where you know the virtual reality walking through and even having like videos kind of pop up around you and say, oh, this is you know this is the brand new range and you know this over here, and so they can talk about features and, and walk through. That's pretty sweet. And then the augmented reality where you can flip around and you're like, oh, the grocery store is a mile this way and the gas station's three blocks that direction. And, you know, whatever you're looking for, it just kind of pops up on your screen. So I definitely see more of that coming in, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially as, as the technology gets faster and a lot of it's just going to mobile. So you won't have to have a separate device. Uh, I think that was what was really hindering it previously. What are three words that your best friend would use to, to describe you? Uh, well, they would, they would definitely, they would talk about how I talk too much. Um, that's just, <laughs> I'm a little chatty and I'm excitable. So I'm sure they would say that. And then, um, just a um, connector, I'd say is another thing. I'm always just out there connecting people. Well, listen, excitable and chatty are two things that are uh, good for an interview like this. So let's, uh, bring them on. Perfect. What's the worst job that you've ever had? I uh, was working right out of college. So I got out of college right after, you know, kind of the tech crash in, in early 2000s. And uh, all I could get was a temp job in a nail warehouse, like picking up these boxes that were like, they're like the size of a shoebox and they weighed like 45 pounds. 
And so like I'd spent, I'd go there in the morning and it was dark when I drove in, I'd work in this cave, picking up these heavy boxes and then I would leave and go home and it would be dark again. So it was just, it was the worst existence of all times. <laughs> how, how I got long, laid off at how Christmas. How long did that go on for? It was only like four months. And then they, the guy I was temping for, cause it was a temp job right. came back. And so literally it was Christmas. I got laid off and it's like, all right, now I got to go find another job. Blessing in disguise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it wasn't a career I wanted to go down anyway. What is something that you're curious about these days? Uh, I'm curious. I'm, I'm always reading about things. Lately, I've actually been, um, I, I'm really, I, I'm getting into like, it, it's almost like psychology, sociology stuff that, that you know, I, I end up reading it for marketing. And then I get, I don't know, I get down these rabbit holes of like what, you know, what makes people tick and why people think the way they do. Um, you know, I see so much where people are looking, they really just, they want affirmation for whatever they're thinking already instead of trying to seek understanding. Mm -hmm. And so, so figuring out like why, you know, where people are coming from and just trying to kind of study social nuances has been really interesting to me lately. Very cool. What is something in the tech space, like a, a tech app or gadget that you use fairly consistently that, uh, you know, could be helpful for, for people listening? Uh, well, like on like a, a daily front, Waze is still like my favorite thing in the world. That's not <laughs> the most exciting. But <laughs> if I didn't have Waze, I would go crazy. Um, trying to think what's on my home screen. I have like four. Uh, if they're golfers, there's a there's an app called Foursome um, that allows you to go through and you keep all your stats and scores and things like that. And so that way you can track whether you're doing, and you usually know whether you're getting better or worse, but you can kind of see where the trends are. Right. That's one I actually, I kind of enjoy. Can you, can you find, for some sounds like you'd be able to find people to like fill out your, your group if you like need an extra, like I'd heard there's something recently. There's like a, uh, if you want to find like a pickup hoops game in the street, like there's an app for that now where you can be like, I'm yeah. in Brooklyn and I want to play whatever. And you can see, how good the co competition is? Is there something like that for the golf golf world? So, so there's another one called uh, I think it's called the Grint, like G R I N T, and you can do that. Like it's funny, I was actually trying to develop an app a while ago, and and basically what I want to do is kind of combine it with what you're talking about, and then a little like online gambling where you could sit there and everybody throws in the money ahead of time, and you're doing like score by score, and some of them will actually do that. Like uh, they'll they'll keep like live tournament results. So if you're playing in like a scramble, you can see where all the other teams are. But that was that was my thought process of, of going in something something like that would yeah. be would be fun. But the Grint does that. Sticking with Waze, let's let's say Waze was on your phone and you could only have two other apps and everything else had to be erased. What what would the other what would the other two be that you kept? Okay, so <clears throat> what do I use all the time? Like so, we'll we'll get rid of social because I, I end up on Facebook and Instagram a fair amount. I, I think kind of like everybody um everyone should probably get rid of those uh, yeah i would agree with that and i th there's a lot of them that are like they're not that exciting you know the amazon app i go to all the time because it's like every time i see something I'm like well could i just have it shipped to my house instead <laughs> you know kind of just lazy even like i didn't like picking up a dog food bag so it's like well i could either show up on my porch or i can have to carry it out of the store <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> so uh, that, that one would be hard to get rid of actually the amazon app would be a really difficult one um and I actually, I use my, uh, I, I really like my Nike Plus running because if I'm not getting credit for going running, then I don't do it. And so <laughs> having the little, like the gamification right. and getting like credit for doing it actually keeps me from being 400 pounds. Right. Need that validation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you could work for any person in the world, who would it be and what job would you want? Uh, any person, I think Mark Cuban is the guy, like I've just always heard how smart he is, but he's like super smart and driven, but he also seems like he'd be fun. I have a feeling he'd be a ball buster at times too. Um, as far as the actual job, um, I would honestly just kind of like to be, and I wouldn't want to do it forever, but just like his executive assistant for a while, just to see how he structures his day, what he does, where he goes kind of get the inside of all of it. I have a feeling if you were in a different department, he would just beat you up all the time. <laughs> well, he probably would as an assistant too. but <laughs> Probably, but at least you get to know all the different things that he's working on rather than just uh, GM of the Mavericks, for example. Exactly. What's a great piece of advice uh, that you've been given that has, has stuck with you? Uh, I was working with a, it was a consultant, and one of the things that he talked about is um, – 
constantly practice and work on being confident. And, you know, it's funny as you get older, you see how many times you go into situations and you can tell the people that are confident and are willing to make a decision and the people that aren't. And, you know, we all have insecurities. We're all people. None of us are just like naturally confident in every situation, but it's like find the things that you can be confident in and then, you know, have that as your baseline and then work on trying to get confident in more situations, stretch yourself and become confident in, in more things. I've never been to Portland before. If I, if I came to visit for 24 hours, where would you take me? Well, this would be one spot. So I'd take you down to the Scotch obviously, Locker here. Obviously. We would have a little of that. <laughs> uh, if you're 24 hours, you know, the cool thing about Portland, you know, it would be depending on, you know, summer or winter. But, um, you know, I drive up through the Columbia River Gorge. There's waterfalls all through it, you know, less than an hour away. Um, you could even loop around, hit uh, – hit Mount Hood and there's like Timberline Lodge and, and some places up on the mountain that are really pretty. So it's outdoor stuff. And then we'd uh, I'd probably take you on a little brewery tour. So there's a ton of really good food, ton of really good beer here, all kinds of, of like micro brews and micro distilleries and things like that. So you can pretty much find anything you want in regards to your flavors. Very cool. And you're, you're born and raised there? Yep. Yep. I was actually just south of town, a little town called Canby. But yeah, born and raised. Every time I leave, I end up loving this place even more <laughs> when, when have you have you left for an extended period uh longest was actually uh in college i studied abroad in australia um but no after that it's always just been trips no more than like a month so leave for a month and end up coming back and it's still homey who is your celebrity crush if you have one it's funny i don't really get into that all that much like i would say somebody that just seems cool so like uh like and I think I even put it on the sheet, Mila Kunis, you know, someone that actually seems like a normal person. Who knows who she is? It could be just pure <laughs> screen thing. Sure. But, but I would go with that. You're not the first one to, uh, to bring her up in this question. That's, yeah, I'm, that's not shocking. <laughs> if you could have a drink with a, a fictional character, who would it be? Um, a fictional character, I would say uh, we'll go with Bruce Wayne on that one. So that way, you know, you could... You, I don't know if I would know if he's Batman or not, so we'd have to figure out that. But either way, it's like he's got access to everything. He's got, you know, he's been all over the world, so I'm sure he'd have some incredible stories. So it'd be fun just to chat about him getting beat up or thrown around or whatever happened to him and how he learned all the things he knows how to do. Would you have a, a preference uh, between, you know, Adam West or a Clooney or a Keaton or uh, which Bruce Wayne? I actually want, uh, I liked, oh, I can't remember his name. Who's the guy in the latest ones? Um, the, like the bat, the dark Knight rises and, um, what's the guy's name? I can't believe I'm blanking in the same exact time you are. Do you know who it's uh, from, Christian from uh, Bale. American psycho, right? Yeah. Christian Bale. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be my favorite. I can't do Keaton or Val Kilmer. Those guys, I can't really do those guys so much, but the, the late one, the new ones are cool. I know you're a big golf fan. Is yes. is golf a sport? Why or why not? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would have to say yes, but it's uh, yeah, it's a sport because it really is. It's all about um, the person doing the work. Um, like it, it's you have to hit the ball. You have to do it. It's not like so. So my caveat would be. And I've had this argument with a couple of people who are like NASCAR fans. And I'm like, it's not a sport. It's a skill. The car does all the work, even though you're talented and you're behind it. Mm -hmm. Like with golf, like you actually have to physically make it go wherever it's going. So I'll give it a sport, but it's definitely on the verge. It's not athletic. <laughs> I'll say that. It's a sport. It's not athletic. Sport, but not, not necessarily athletic competition. <laughs> yeah. You see a lot of very unathletic people that are real good at golf. That's very true. <laughs> I remember one of my friends back in the day who would argue that it's not a sport. And one of the things he would say is, if my 70-year-old grandmother can beat me in it, it's not a sport. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually, that, that's true. <laughs> I can get that, but I'll give it a sport, not athletic. We'll say that. How did you celebrate your 21st birthday? Uh, the, on the actual day, I was I was working. This I was working at a, a club, like a gym, actually. Like it was this big kind of club gym thing, and so I just went out with a handful of coworkers. And and at that point, I really didn't drink that much. And they bought me a couple of <clears throat> awful shots, like people do. Then they want to torture you, right? And uh, I got drunk real fast and I had to go put myself to bed. So it really wasn't a super exciting twenty first birthday. Pretty pretty wild. <laughs> That's what, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> People have far better stories than what I do on that one. <laughs> What's a piece of advice you would give to your, your 20 year old self? Uh, it would go back to what I talked about earlier is like, just, uh, you know, be confident in yourself, you know, especially when I was 20, it's like, I was always second guessing things and I would tend to not, not go into situations confident. I would just kind of wait for other people to take the lead. And it's like, no, be, be confident who you are. You're smart enough. You're capable of what you're trying to accomplish. And you're like, as I've learned, as I've gone along, a lot of people, you know, kind of puff up and, and pretend to be something they're not. And, and once the real, you know, the rubber hits the road, you'll probably outpace most people. So that's why I tell my 20 year old self. All right. What is something that you tried that you will never try again? I'll try most things twice. It'd have to be food. I mean, I've definitely had a couple things that were just awful. Um, I would like to say tomatoes, but I keep trying and I keep hating them. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like tomatoes either. They're disgusting. They're the devil's fruit. Um, what is a food that I tried that I just really hated? Come back to that one. I'll, I'll get you an update on that because I've definitely tried some things that are really terrible. You got it. If you could give a, a TED Talk on any subject, what would it be? Uh, so so I have this whole saying that, that I came up with. And it was mostly like whenever it was during the whole election cycle where everybody was yelling and nobody was listening. So I call it bullhorns and earmuffs. And so I'd love to give a TED talk about like flipping that around and actually listening for a second and not just like, like I find most people these days are already coming up with their counter argument while the other person's talking. So they're not even listening to what, what the other person's saying. And, and if we would actually just take a second, listen, process, and then have a conversation, I think we'd get a lot further versus just bullhorns and earmuffs, yelling at people and not listening. Sounds good. Probably tough uh, logistically <laughs> to pull that off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. What is but TED talks I find are mostly theoretical anyway. It's sure. all it's all rainbows and butterflies for sure. What is something that you're really excited about right now? Uh, two things. One, I'm just excited that it's like the weather's finally nice here in Portland. It does stay gray for a while, and so now it's golf season. So I get a you know mostly Saturday mornings I get to go out and play golf with all my buddies. And then I just went on a road trip, and so every so often I just get I get excited about something stupid, and so I want to buy an RV. I don't know what I want or if I'm even going to do it right now, but just like just the shopping and looking at all of them is just really fun. For sure. So I'll just sit there on the couch and geek out looking at RV photos. Nice. You're a Oregon State fan, I saw from uh, your Facebook page. Alumni yeah. as well. Yes, sir. Oregon State alumni fan. Yep. Yeah. Gary Payton or Chad Johnson? Oh. I, that's a tough one. I like Chad Johnson just cause he's so goofy and, and he was there when I was there. So <laughs> that, that brief Uber small window in time when he actually went to school, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, but I really, I like Chad Johnson. Let's say speaking of road trip before you have to go on a road trip from Portland to Nebraska and you have to bring three people with you. Who are you taking? And it cannot be a family member. All right. Well, right now, because our Oregon State's playing the College World Series final, um, so right, I would right bring. To Omaha. Yeah, I'd right, go straight to Omaha. I mean, why else do you go to Nebraska? Um, I would go to. Uh, I bring my buddy Justin because he's a big Beaver fan, um, and then my buddies. Uh, well, I'd have to. I'd have to figure out which ones want to go. But we'll probably Joe and Yuha. They're three of my buddies that that we end up going to Beaver games together, and and road trip into Omaha would actually appeal to them. Nice. You just mentioned that you you just took a road trip. Where did you go, and who who was with you on that one? So I was with my girlfriend, and we went. We started in Portland, went through southern Idaho all the way down through Utah. Um, we hit all five national parks down at the south. So really, Utah is one of those states that kind of gets a bad rap. I think I'd never been there before. Yeah, and I was like. Out of all that, like, so we went there, we went down to all the way to Roswell. That's a whole different story. And then back up through Arizona, Nevada, California, back to Portland. So it was a big loop. A big and we one. basically the whole Southwest. How long but, did that take? Uh, we did it in eight days. So we went like 4,000 miles in eight wow. days. So it was, it was a lot of driving. Um, but Utah is incredible. I, I, would, I would suggest anybody that hasn't been there, go to southern Utah and, and go through the national parks. They're amazing. I definitely wanted to do the parks with my with my family at some point when the kids are a little older. That sounds like yeah. it just seems like an awesome an awesome ride. Yeah, it'll be something they'll remember. Yeah, for sure. You um you described yourself um in your in your facts as a road tripping warrior. 
What yep. was what was the best road trip or a or a great story that you remember from one of your trips? So so my probably the coolest road trip I went on is I had a buddy, and this has now been about ten years ago or so, and we started in Portland and drove all the way down to the tip of Baja and then back. So we took like a month and we just had we were in like a pickup and a camper and he and I would just go down and and down in, I mean, you're in Mexico where there's nothing for like miles and miles. So we would just pull out on like the most incredible beaches you've ever seen. Just like put down the little like strut things and then inflate the kayak and we'd be out just like fishing. We'd see like dolphins jumping and whales and just be snorkeling around. And literally there was not a single soul anywhere. That's awesome. And so we could just sit back and have a beer and relax and take naps and it was awesome. And then just move on to the next place and do the same thing. Exactly. Yep. Not a, not Rinse, a repeat. Not, not a bad, not a bad gig. <laughs> no, it's a great trip. Who comes to mind when you think of the word successful? Um, I would say so. So the guy that founded our, our company, his name's Pat Stone. Uh, he's a guy that seems like everything he touches does well. Um, you know, and so he's, he's one of those super driven guys, super successful retired. Like when he, before he started our company, he actually had retired and tried to just not do anything and he just can't handle it. And so he came back and started our company and now, and it's been about eight years ago, but now we're in 47 States and going the direction exactly the way he said he would and, wow. and doing well. So yeah, he, he's kind of a guy that, and he's not successful by chance. He's successful by what he does. Well done, Pat. Yeah. Who is your favorite TV character of all time? Uh, TV character. I would say, well, I kind of, this just comes to mind because we've got this thing coming up. But, like, I love, uh, I'm forgetting his name, but it's basically Chevy Chase's character in Caddyshack. Mm -hmm. um, Ty, what is it? Ty something? Anyway, but it's love because he does. He just like has money. He doesn't really do anything. He just sort of wanders around. And so, yeah, he plays golf. Yeah, he's like, he's like they pick up the check. He's like, ah, keep it. <laughs> it's like, it seems like a pretty good life. He's he's fantastic. If if you won the lottery tomorrow, what are three things you know for sure you would do with the money? Well, so uh, I, I have visions of being a snowbird at some point. So I would get a. a place either in like palm springs or phoenix or something like that so i could at least go down there at times during the winter mm -hmm. um i'd probably buy the rv because that's what's on my brain right now i'd find right. something something there and then the other one would be more sensible i'd end up either you know i'd be paying off debt for like my family so they could actually come hang out with me and i would you know i'd, I'd pay off all of my debt so i wouldn't have any you know house payments or anything like that anymore so and i'm assuming like powerball money here too not yes. like some little piddly thing yes. so it's yes. <laughs> yeah. life-changing money huge so, yeah. life-changing f off money yeah. yeah exactly so that's why i would make sure my whole family is set up extended family is set up and i'd throw a big party and then have all my friends and stuff for that and then i would get myself a, a way to be a snowbird and just go around right. in my rv and play get in the rv and just get out of the, get out of town absolutely <clears throat> for your last meal what would you have I would have, it would be, I would go with uh, like a tomahawk cut steak. Um, I'd have to have like garlic mashed potatoes. And then I probably would throw a lobster tail in there just so you get a little surf and turf. And then I'd be drinking whiskey with that and it'd be pretty incredible. You always got to throw in the lobster tail for any, uh, any, any real quality meal. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> what, if, if we were... To, to stick with the whiskey, if we, we were if we were going out tonight, like drinking, like really drinking, okay. what what would you what would you like? What would be your your beverage of choice? Obviously, I think it's going to be a brown liquor, but what? Give me a little more specifics. If we're going to where we're going to be drinking a ton of it, and it's going to be like an all night long thing, uh, I actually end up usually going like vodka sodas. I go something simple like that. Otherwise, I'm a big fan of. Uh, like Jameson rocks or even like Jameson soda. So that way it's like, you know, you get a little flavor to it. Mm -hmm. I love my brown liquor, but I don't really like mixing it most of the time. So mm -hmm. most, most of the brown stuff I want to like kind of just sip on and savor. It's not for the, the big night on the town. Right. It's more for hanging out on that couch with, uh, with some, fr <laughs> exactly with some friends. What it is. <laughs> it's for relaxing. If you could have personally witnessed one event in history, uh, what would you want to have go to go back and see? So the, the big one, it, it would depend on perspective, but like from a time set, I would love to have been one of the guys that landed on the moon first. 
Um, so even if I'm just sitting in the capsule watching, you know, Neil Armstrong come down the ladder, like I think that would be incredible. Yeah. Um, otherwise I'd want to go all the way back to like Roman times and see one of their armies, like sacking a village and see what it really looked like. <laughs> totally nice, different thing. But. <laughs> nice, nice image there. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not ideal, but I just kind of want to see what Roman armies really looked like. <laughs> what is something that you're great at? Something I'm great at. Um, I'm great at uh, I'm I'm great at reading people, like sitting down and having situational awareness and being able to figure out like you know who's uncomfortable, who's who's feeling like they're included, who's not trying to bring people in, um, you know, paying attention and like not over talking people for the most part. Even though I'm a talker, like I right. I can usually figure out when I'm over talking people. So I'm I'm pretty great at being socially aware. You're doing great so far, just to. Uh... <laughs> update you on on your uh, talking status at the moment <laughs> i appreciate it <laughs> uh, what music group would you want to play at your next birthday party i'd have to go with def leppard like we're gonna go full on right. 80s old school rock in the one arm drummer i'm all i'm all for a good uh pour some sugar on me or his or uh, <laughs> absolutely animal or whatever that album hysteria was that the album <laughs> hysteria, yeah. yeah that was a good that was a great one what's a, a skill that you want to acquire in the next 40 years I want to, I bought a camera a few years ago, um, like a full on, like a DSLR. It's not like the real nice one. It's just like one of the, what is it? The T2I I think, but it's like, you know, Canon rebel. Um, I want to get good at that. I want to be able to, you know, take really cool night shots and to be able to like change exposure and things like that to where like, I don't know, it doesn't look like I took it with my phone and just, you know, put a filter on it. I want it to actually look like what the professional stuff looks like. Is that something that you like? You mess around with now? You're just not great at it yet, or you're just kind of like exactly. you, you bought the yeah. camera and it's sitting somewhere, just collecting. Them? No, I've actually I've taken a lot of photos, <laughs> um, but like at this point in time, usually what I'm doing, and I bought a nicer lens, so some of the stuff comes out really nice. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I usually am like putting it on auto. Like I don't know what most of the buttons or things do. So it's like I, I'm doing it now, right. but I'm not not great at it. What are you afraid of? monotony i get really bad at just being stuck doing the same thing over and over and over again like gets old really quickly do you find yourself in that situation a lot where you're like all right i have to i have to change something up here um not necessarily actually i've done a pretty good job of like even like within my career and my relationships and things like that like it's been adaptable so i, I don't find myself getting stuck in ruts too bad um you know there's always the ruts but of course but for the most part no I, i'm not the i'm not the nine to five button pusher i'm not stuck in a cube all day so life's not terrible and it's the middle of the week and you're sitting in a uh, in a scotch room on a couch so you're doing <laughs> you're doing all right <laughs> exactly to, to get away from that uh that cubicle life <laughs> exactly fill in the blank I, i'm not as blank as i used to be oh a lot of things. Skinny, athletic. Uh, <laughs> those, those just come, we'll, we'll those come with the territory. Those, those come with the territory. Yeah. I think every every 40 year old could probably answer this. <laughs> what is uh, did, a, did you want another one or is that is that work? Hey, if you, if you have one, I'll, I'll take it. If you want to stop there. Those no are more. the first ones that come to mind. I'm definitely I, I'm yeah, it's it's all the things that come along with waking up in the morning. You're like, oh man, why does that hurt? You know, and you don't know why. <laughs> Yet every day I have a new one of those. <laughs> exactly. What what is a, a pet peeve of yours? Uh, over talking, like and like over talking. I mean, like people that don't listen. Like so, when somebody just like when you start to have a conversation and they just like go over the top of you while you're still mid sentence over oh, like once in a while it happens to everybody. But when that's constantly happening, it drives me crazy. Right. Usually that person's not, not listening. Kind of like your, uh, bullhorns and uh, ear earmuffed crowd. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is a quirk of yours that a few people know about? Um, so, well, there's, I have a couple, one of them is, and actually, I could go back to pet peeve, too. So driving is one of those things because I'm in my car a lot all day long. So fast lane hogs are somebody that drives me crazy. Um, but the I don't know if everybody knows that I'm in a hurry all the time for really no good reason. But I just if I'm in my car, if I'm going somewhere doing something, 
I've got an intent or purpose. Like I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm trying to get whatever it is accomplished. Yeah. So getting stuck between lollygaggers and people that don't really seem like they're going anywhere drives me bonkers. And, and so, I, so I get quirky. I get irritated real easy with that. Is that just when you're like in the car trying on the way to like get somewhere or like with every, if you're sitting at your desk and you're trying to do a task, are you like, do you find yourself rushing through things in general? Uh, a little bit. I would also say it's like, you know, say you're like going into the grocery store, you're going into a, like Costco is like my favorite example of this. Like you're, you're walking down like the Costco aisle. Right. And it's like, it's like 15 feet wide. And yet there'll be like three across going like one mile an hour and stopping every three feet to look at every display on the way down the aisle. And I'm usually like there for like my four items and I want to get out. And so it dry, like people just leave carts in the middle of the aisle. I'm like, dude, why don't you pull over to the side? And so I can like motor back to grab my whatever toilet paper and something else and get back to the front of the store where I want to go. <laughs> that makes me think of a, uh, a Jerry Seinfeld bit that he, he does, where he's like, everyone, everyone goes to the supermarket with a list. I'm going to get this and get this and this. And you get in there and you're just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's mesquite? <laughs> That's exactly right. Full of distractions. If you could relive a single day from your past exactly as it happened the first time, what would you choose to experience all over again? Um, you know, if I were going to pick that one, it would probably be, and this is how, how excited I get about Oregon State stuff, it would be the Fiesta Bowl uh, when Oregon State just crushed Notre Dame. That was a really good day for me. Like, it was just, you know, sitting there watching the game. Everybody thought, like, it's like, who's Oregon State? And then, you know, you have down there with some really good buddies and having some drinks. And that was a, that was a good day I could relive over and over again. What, what year was that? 2000. Were you, still in, you were still in college. You were a senior in college? Yep, yep. I was still, yeah. I was actually a junior in college because <clears throat> I took the long route to get through college. But, right. yep. Smart, smart, <laughs> smart move. Yeah. Uh, but, I, man, I totally get that. Football... I went to the University of Michigan, so football is okay. a uh, a big, big part of my uh, my time there for sure. I can appreciate that too. What is a a great compliment that you received that has stuck with you? Uh, I got I got one. It was a it was a I don't know a few months back, and it was a it was actually a coworker, and she just said she goes, you know, you really are just a great man, and and, and it was meant like in a like in a, in a perfect, in a genuine way, where I was just like, you know, you treat people right, you do the right things for people. And, you know, you're, you, you don't have ulterior motives when you're doing it. And it's like, I thought that was a, that was a, it was a good compliment. Simple and effective for sure. Exactly. What is something that all 40 year olds should go in and do or try ASAP? Uh, what is it? Good? I mean, all 40-year-olds should go do or try. I mean, I would say a scotch tasting would be a great thing for everybody to try. Like, it's, it's kind of like wine tasting, you know? You just go through and you, like, try all the different regions and you just find the one you like. <laughs> it seems like, like the uh, <laughs> whoever's doing the PR for wine tastings is a lot more successful than whoever's doing the PR for scotch tastings, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, wine tastings are, are everywhere and everyone does them and everyone loves them, but people aren't sipping on the scotch enough. No, not at all. But they're kind of like wine. They're literally so like varied in their flavors. You can you can pretty much find one for everyone. Do you have a specific region that you uh, prefer your scotch from? I really like the Isla stuff. So I like really I, I like the stuff that most people don't. That super heavy, peaty, smoky. Like it's like a campfire in your mouth. Yep, uh, that's my favorite. It's like it's like literal kerosene. <laughs> it, it pretty much it is. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't appreciate it. Who is someone that you think would be a good guest on this podcast? Uh, let me see. Who just recently turned forty? Um, I, there's a there's a guy. I, there's a couple guys that I know, but one is my he's my buddy Chris. Um, Chris Fay is his name. Uh, he runs a like a golf travel business, but he's always he's just he's kind of quirky like me, where he just has like a, a fun sense of humor and he's chatty and he tells stories and. You know, but he's got he's got the the family and kids and all that stuff. So he has whole different kinds of stories. So he'd be a he'd be a good guest to chat with. Well, there's only room for one Chris on this uh, on this podcast. So yeah, he's, so he's, <laughs> he spells it different though, so you can still own it. All right, cool. Come come at me, Chris. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, if you if you were hosting this podcast, what's a question that you would want to ask other other forty year olds? Uh, you know, if there's 
see, I, I always like to go back and look at, you know, like revisionist things. So it's like, all right, so what is the, what is the one decision you made in your life that you think made, you know, the most impact on a go forward basis, like to, to put you in the place that you're at now? So what is the one decision that you've made in your life that put you in the place you are now? Uh, for me, it's, uh, you know, find, find the things that, that make you happy. For me, it's a lot of, it's been, I went out, I'm working for a company now, but I work with, with some people that give me a lot of autonomy. And so it, it's find a job you actually have a passion about, um, or find something that you actually can get excited about. So that way you don't wake up miserable every day going like, Oh God, another day at work. You know, we all have those days, but, but like overall find, find something that you can actually get excited about in the morning. How long have you been uh, with this company that you're with now? Uh, so it's been eight years now that I've been with this. But and then I was always self-employed previous to that. So it's always kind of like chasing my own way right. through the world. All right. Nice way to go. Fellow, uh, exactly. fellow, fellow entrepreneur, I, I respect it. We have quickly gotten to the uh, final question here. So what song did you choose to uh, end the episode today and why did you select it? Uh, let's go with, uh, since we were talking about Def Leppard, let's go with Pour Some Sugar on Me. And it's just because every time I hear that song, it just puts that smile on my face and How I could grin. It not? How could it not? It's just a great song. <laughs> it is great. I'm assuming most uh, 40-somethings, it brings them back to uh, you know early high school, junior high type of uh, time of their life. <laughs> exactly. It uh, always gives you energy. Where can people uh, find you online if you're uh, interested in, in, in people possibly doing that? Yeah, so I on um, Facebook, Instagram, any of those. I'm uh, I'm at Aaron Stell, A A R O N S T E L L E. Um, I actually have to fix it a little bit. I've got a a website and another like a Facebook group and page called Aaron's Two Cents. Um, so it's just Aaron's A A R O N S, the number two, and then cents. Um, so that's where I put out. Some of it's just stupid little videos and things I made like on YouTube. Some of it's, uh, you know, marketing and business related stuff that I've done for work. And uh, it's kind of a smattering of random things. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Check that out, everyone. Aaron, thank you for uh, joining us today. No problem. Appreciate you having me on, Chris. We will see you all next time on Past the 40. Have a great day. Thanks again. Cool, man. That was quick. All right, bud. Nice and easy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, yeah, you'll have to... Uh, when you get all done, shoot it on over, and, and I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, yeah I'll send you all the uh, all the links. Um, what's the URL for your website? I'm check it out. Aaron's it's, Two Cents with number yep. two or TWL? Yep, the number two. Number two. Yeah, is... and the website's probably the worst of the bunch. I need to go through and, and update that. It's like a 10-year-old site that I haven't gotten back to lately. <laughs> How often but, do you, like, throw shit out there? Uh, I haven't been doing it. Like, I'll, I'll throw it out periodically. Lately, I haven't been doing much with it. I've been... Most of the stuff I've built out has been industry things, and we put that on our company site. So I'm just an author on our, our company stuff. So we have a, a website called The Modern Day Agent that we build out like product reviews and blogs and things like that. So nice. I need to get back to it. It's just it's time. <laughs> it's like, Listen, it's creating, creating content always, and always finds its way to the bottom of uh, people's priority lists. You know, it's always something like, I'll do later, I'll do later. And it's, it's, it's really tough to keep up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So very cool, man. Well, like I said, I'll, I'll look forward to hear from you. If you do ever come to Portland, I'll make sure and give you the grand tour. You got it, man. I'll look you up for sure. I'll be in touch. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right, buddy. Thank you. All right. Bye.